Hey, this is Tom, and we have an urgent update right now coming up with a lot of changes going on in Israel and Gaza. I have to do this on my phone. I apologize for the bad audio, but we don't have time today to put out a fully produced video. The information is more important to me than the production quality. I hope you understand that. Now, right now, there has been made a major decision in the Hamas leadership as far as what are the next steps, and this is massive. For days and days and days, we had absolutely no movement, no changes. The only thing we heard about is the negotiations that have failed, they're stalled, nothing really happened. Now, I told you a month ago, go and check my channel, that the negotiations are not going to be fruitful and no deal will come out of them to release the Israeli hostages. I told you a month ago. And the reason I gave you is because Hamas doesn't have any interest to do so. They only wanted to stall and cause Israel to waste you know, basically time and to make them look like they've failed the deal. Now, now major, major changes. So Hamas has realized one thing, which is that the Israelis have no intentions to stop the war. Basically what this means, despite international pressure, despite US pressure against Netanyahu, in fact, the US has been trying to isolate Netanyahu from the Israelis, basically saying, well, it's not you guys, it's Netanyahu who's failing the peace process, right? Despite all this pressure not to go into Rafah, just to kind of remind you, Rafah is this little piece of land that essentially is the border between Gaza and Egypt. This little strip of land has been used for 20 years to smuggle weapons, machinery, all this technology into Gaza that was used to wage war against Israel for the past 20 years. Now, the Israelis would love to seal that hole because the Egyptians have failed to do so for the past 20 years. That's just a factual statement. No knock on the Egyptians. I mean, it's hard. There's not a lot of sovereignty and governance in the Sinai Peninsula where the Egyptians could have done it properly. I don't know if this was intentional or they just screwed it up, but the Egyptians failed to seal that loophole. Now, what happened right now is that the Hamas leadership realized that the Israelis have decided that it is an existential question for them to seal Rafah crossing, despite the 1.5 million people that are basically right now in Rafah, the refugees, despite the condemnations, despite the huge international backlash, despite the deteriorating relationship with the United States, the Israelis have made a decision that they will go in into Rafah because without closing that border, without stopping these smuggles from Egypt into Gaza, this whole war means nothing for the Israelis. Unless they can stop Hamas from rearming themselves, this war has been a huge colossal waste of time. So the Israelis cannot afford to stop. Otherwise, they'll have to admit that the war basically was a huge waste of time. They have to seal that gap. It's like taking half of your antibiotics, you know, it's just going to come back bigger and stronger. Now, since they've made the decision, the United States have been basically going very, very harsh against Netanyahu, against the Israeli policy. But nevertheless, the decision has fallen. Now, Hamas leadership now realizes, and they've realized it in the past few hours, that the Israelis will go into Rafah. There's no avoiding this. They're going to do it. Now, the Hamas leadership, and when I say Hamas leadership, I really just mean Yahya Sinwar. It's a one-man show at this point. He calls the shots, and the face is Khaled Mashal, who is uh, overseas, basically communicating the decisions of, of, uh, of Sinwar. So Sinwar basically said to himself, look, right now we understand that the Israelis are going to go into Rafah. We cannot win this battle. We don't have the manpower. There's just nothing we can do. We can fight to the last bullet. And we can lose more soldiers and we can lose more machinery, more technology. But eventually, Rafa is going to fall into the Israeli hands. It's just, it's a fact, right? So what Sinwar has decided to do is to keep up minimal resistance, sacrifice 20% of what he has left, 15% of what he has left, leave some resistance in place, but basically go absolutely underground and avoid this as much as possible. Basically, let the Israelis roll into Rafah without making it look like they've given up. Basically, give up Rafah while trying to make appearances as if they're putting up a fight, knowing full well they're gonna lose. And knowing full well, this is gonna cost them about 15% of their manpower, remaining manpower. Now, Sinwar is not very sensitive to loss of human life whatsoever, and just, you know, his MO from the beginning of this. Now, the next plan, has to be examined from the eyes of Hamas. Right now, Hamas is saying to the United States, to the Europeans, to the Israelis, look, we want to negotiate a peace deal. Now, what they're really saying here is two things. Number one, Hamas leaders understand that they have full immunity until they release the hostages. 
The Israelis will not assassinate any of them, will not kill any of them, because they understand that the future deal to release hostages will inevitably involve some sort of a guarantee. They release all the hostages, and then the Israelis promise not to kill Sunwar and Khalid Mashal and the Hamas leadership, right? So the future deal is going to include the release of the hostages in return for not assassinating the Hamas leadership. That's going to be the deal. And that's what Hamas is banking on. Sinwar knows that eventually, if, you know, the feet hit the shan, he can always give the Israelis the hostages back and he's going to be secured his safety because the Israelis will probably agree to that deal. What they've also been saying is that right now they have one condition and their only condition is that the people of Gaza are allowed to return back to the northern Gaza, the one that's been conquered by the IDF. And that all the prisoners that will be released from the Israeli prisons, all the murderers, the terrorists, they will all be allowed not to return to Gaza. They will be returned to their homes in the West Bank, across the street, so to speak. Why? Well, that is because Hamas is basically prepping for stage two of this war. Stage one has clearly been lost. It's just a question of time until the Israelis conquer everything, right? Stage two is going to be guerrilla warfare against the Israeli military in Gaza and in the West Bank. As the Palestinian Authority loses ground, losing support, whatever support it used to still have, the PA is basically falling apart. So the Hamas leadership understands, number one, you know, we'll eventually give them the hostages. They're going to say they're not going to hurt us. And that's going to be the end of it. But before we do so, we also make sure that we put our guys, the guys from the Israeli prisons, all the terrorists, all the heads of terrorists, all the murders, we put them in the West Bank. So after the war, they're going to manage the new wave of the guerrilla warfare from the West Bank against Israel. And we're going to keep our force, about 80% of what we have left right now, we're not going to sacrifice it in order to defend Rafah, so that we can use those people to wage guerrilla warfare against the Israelis as they, deep, uh, as they sink deeper, so to speak, into the Gazan mud you know, over the next couple of years. And we're just basically going to wage this attrition war, attrition war against the Israelis in Gaza and the West Bank from both directions after this war has been lost. And we eventually will drive them out like they, the, the, the Hamas is basically saying, look, the Lebanese, Hezbollah, drove them out after an attrition war of many, many years, we're going to do the same in Gaza. That's their mindset. And we're going to be safe because we're going to give them the hostages. They're going to guarantee the safety of the leaders. And that's the way the cookie crumbles right now. That's the current plan of Hamas. So what to expect? No hostage deal right now. Israel is going to Rafah. Israel will eventually take Rafah. Hostage deal will follow. They will secure the safety of Yahya Sinwar. And then we're going to see massive, massive amount of guerrilla warfare against the Israeli forces in Gaza and in the West Bank. Peace, God knows when. I'll see you in the next one.